Well, hello, Class A. Hello, Merry Christmas to Class A in Year One at St. Boniface. Oh, it's wonderful to speak to you all today. Oh, and to your grown-ups, to Miss Teague and Mrs. Crowback and Miss Bolter. Oh, they've been telling me all the marvellous things you've been doing this term. I hear you've been working ever so hard, learning all about ecology and seasonal change. Oh, I do love the seasons. Of course, I don't see many seasons here in the North Pole. It's mainly very wintry. But I hear such marvellous things about spring and summer and autumn. Oh, I would so love to experience them, maybe. Maybe when you're sending me your Christmas list, you could write me a little something about the seasons and explain them to me so I could learn about them as well. That would be very good. Oh, yes, I know. I'm going to do it, Chief Elf. Chief Elf has asked me to remind you, if you could send me your Christmas list, that would be marvellous. We've still got plenty of time, so if you haven't sent them, don't worry. You can put pen to paper or cut out some pictures and stick them, and we shall do our best to bring you all the presents you most like. Oh, yes, because I hear... Not a single one of you is on the, uh, the you-know-what list. You have all been so, so good this term, working so, so hard. I hear even that you've learned all of your numbers from 1 to 20. How marvellous! Well done, Year 1. Well done to Class A. I think you are doing sterling work. Now, speaking of sterling work, while the elves here are making all the toys and wrapping them for Christmas, we try and amuse ourselves by trying to find the funniest, silliest Christmas joke possible. And would you like to hear this year's winner of the funniest, silliest Christmas joke ever? Here goes. How do snowmen get around? They ride an icicle. <laughs> they ride an icicle. <laughs> what a wonderful message from Santa. Now, would you like a story? The night before Christmas. It was the night before Christmas when all through the house not a creature was stirring, not even a mouse. The stockings were hung by the chimney with care in hope that St. Nicholas soon would be there. The children were nestled all snug in their beds while visions of sugar plums danced in their heads. And Mama in her kerchief and I in my cap had just settled down for a long winter's nap when out on the lawn there arose such a clatter I sprang from the bed to see what was the matter. Away to the window I flew like a flash, tore open the shutters and threw up the sash. The moon on the breast of the new-fallen snow gave luster of midday to objects below. When what to my wondering eyes should appear but a miniature sleigh and eight tiny reindeer? With a little old driver so lively and quick I knew in a moment it must be St. Nick. More rapid than eagles his coursers they came, and he whistled and shouted and called them by name. Now Dasher, now Dancer, now Prancer and Vixen, on Comet, on Cupid, on Donner and Blitzen, to the top of the porch, to the top of the wall. Now dash away, dash away, dash away all. As dry leaves that before the wild hurricane fly, when they meet with an obstacle mount to the sky, so up to the housetop the coursers they flew, with a sleigh full of toys and St. Nicholas too. And then, in a twinkling, I heard on the roof the prancing and pawing of each little hoof. As I drew in my head and was turning around, down the chimney St. Nicholas came with a bound. He was dressed all in fur from his head to his foot, and his clothes were all tarnished with ashes and soot. A bundle of toys he had flung on his back, and he looked like a peddler just opening his pack. His eyes, how they twinkled, his dimples, how merry, his cheeks were like roses, his nose like a cherry. His droll little mouth was drawn up like a bow, and his beard on his chin was as white as the snow. The stump of a pipe he held tight in his teeth, and the smoke it encircled his head like a wreath. He had a broad face and a little round belly that shook when he laughed like a bowl full of jelly. <laughs> he was chubby and plump, a jolly old elf, and I laughed when I saw him in spite of myself. A wink of his eye and a twist of his head soon gave me to know I had nothing to dread. He spoke not a word, but went straight to his work and filled all the stockings, then turned with a jerk and laying his finger aside of his nose and giving a nod, up the chimney he rose. He sprang to his sleigh, to his team gave a whistle and away they all flew like the down of a thistle. But I heard him exclaim ere he drove out of sight, Merry Christmas to all, and to all a good night. What a great story, Santa. Have you got anything else? Something funny, maybe?
And now I'd like to read you one of my favorite poems, Snowball. I made myself a snowball, as perfect as could be. I thought I'd keep it as a pet and let it sleep with me. I made it some pajamas and a pillow for its head. Then last night it ran away, but first it wet the bed. <laughs> Santa, that was brilliant. That's one of my favorites. Did you enjoy that? Well, Class A, it's been wonderful to speak to you today. We're having a brilliant December here in the North Pole, but I hear there are some very special people with very special days in December that we have to say a big happy birthday to. I hear that Astasia, Arundel, and Alex all have their birthdays in December. Happy birthday to the three of you. Happy day. Hope they are wonderful. Now, I have one last big favor to ask you. Will you all, Class A, make sure you go to bed nice and early on Christmas Eve? Get all wrapped up snugly and warm in your snugly warm pyjamas, in your snugly warm beds, and close your eyes and go to sleep on Christmas Eve, which makes it easier for me and the reindeers to deliver all your wonderful presents that you've put on your lists. Will you do that for me? Well done. Thank you so much, Class A. I'll speak to you all soon. Merry Christmas! Ho, ho, ho!